Season 3 has some of the biggest PvP changes to date, whether it's the Insignia Trinket being reduced down to a 90 second cooldown for healers, or Demon Hunters one-shotting your team with two of their Shadowlands Covenant abilities. There are a lot of new mechanics to learn, so break out your notepad and pencil as we go through the most important mechanic changes of patch 10.2. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcapped is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First up, let's talk about the newly reworked rogues, who seem to be dominating just about everyone right now as all three specs. For subtlety, this is partially due to their new ability, Gormaw's Bite, which hits incredibly hard on its own. However, when assisted by all potential modifiers like Symbols of Death, Perforated Veins, Dance Macabre, and Dark Shadows, it can result in you losing over half of your health pool in one global. Tracking this ability can be challenging, however, as Gormaw Bite's baseline 45 second cooldown gets reduced by 15 seconds every time the rogue vanishes. Because of this, the most significant indicator that you're about to get bursted by Gormaw's Bite is when the rogue stacks up four perforated veins buffs and uses Secret Technique. They often attempt to combo these abilities simultaneously due to Secret Technique's slight delay on its damage, enabling them to quickly follow up with Gormaw's Bite. Another huge change to Subtlety Rogue's burst is the rework of Shadow Blades, turning it from a low impact cooldown into one of the strongest in the rogue's kit. This is because it will now fill the rogue's combo points to full after every generator used for 15 seconds, making it a major burst cooldown you need to watch out for and use defensives on. Moving on, Assassination has also received huge changes to its tree, which allow it to pick up the high impact 1 minute CD talent King's Bane. This ability causes a significant damage over time effect that deals more damage the longer the rogue has uptime. Although technically a poison, King's Bane cannot be dispelled or removed with the dwarf racial ability. So, when you see it applied, make sure you are using a defensive or trying to crowd control the rogue to minimize its output as much as possible. Another new addition to Assassination's kit is Sudden Demise, which has the same threshold and mechanics as Touch of Death, instantly killing you from 10% health if the rogue has enough bleed damage. Because of this, when facing Assassination rogues, make sure you don't try to live on a knife's edge, or you will be facing a quick death. When it comes to Outlaw, they have had their Ghostly Strike buff to be a 15% damage increase, although on a much longer cooldown, as well as a change to how their killing spree works, turning it into a potent finishing move that delays 100% of the damage taken during the effect, spreading it out over 8 seconds, much like a Brewmaster's Stagger ability. Other than that, not much is different that you need to know about Outlaw, other than they are currently tuned to do ridiculously high damage on every ability. Speaking of doing insane amounts of damage, Demon Hunters have also been blessed by the Blizzard Rework Factory, rivaling a power level similar to that of Rhett Paladins after their revamp in Season 1. Part of the reason Demon Hunters are doing so much damage is the Inertia Talent, which increases their damage after they fell rush with Immolation Aura, which resets all the time due to their Fire Inside Talent, so they're basically running around amped almost all game. Demon Hunters are now also able to take the Elysian Decree Talent, which was moved on the tree to be way more accessible than before. This ability will place a huge area of effect on the floor and then detonate after 1 or 2 seconds, depending on whether talented, for huge damage. To avoid this, make sure you try and have a movement ability ready for its 1 minute cooldown or pop a defensive if you cannot escape. Another ability that is making Demon Hunters so powerful is their new talent, Chaotic Disposition, which gives any of their Chaos abilities a 7.77% chance to multi-strike for 17% of its damage 7 times. This can have disastrous effects when facing Demon Hunters, as it means they can potentially global you from half health with a ton of different buttons, as well as Fell Barrage being made into a cooldown that spends Fury to deal huge damage, you definitely want to be tracking this one. Not to mention that Demon Hunters now have a 2 minute metamorphosis, allowing them to get 2 uses of it in a solo shuffle. Oh, and if they don't need to take Mortal Strike, they can take Deflecting Dance instead, giving them a 15% shield every time they Blade Dance. That's a lot of buffs. Next up are Warlocks, who have all received an armor buff, making them tankier to physical damage, as well as minor changes to destruction and demonology that affect the way they play. When it comes to countering demonology damage, your first thought is CC the Tyrant, right? Well, with patch 10.2, this is no longer the best way to shut a demonology warlock down. This is because their damage profile has shifted to a more consistent one, revolving around Vile Fiend and Dread Stalkers, rather than trying to create huge setups with their demonic tyrant. In fact, the playstyle has changed so much that a majority of warlocks are opting to take a shorter cooldown tyrant to buff their pets more often, leaving the actual tyrant to do very negligible damage. For this reason, when you see a tyrant being cast, make sure that you try to root the pets rather than tunnel visioning crowd control of the tyrant itself. Next, we have Destruction Warlocks, who have lost their madness of the Azhakir talent, 
which would empower their second Chaos Bolt used within a small window of the first cast. This means that before, if a Warlock didn't cast two bolts in a row, they would miss out on tons of damage. With this being removed, Blizzard has flat buffed Chaos Bolt to compensate, making it hit even harder than it did before. However, they are missing out on the reduced cast time that Madness also gave. Because of this change, you should now be scared of every Chaos Bolt being cast. However, it should be easier to shut them down without their super quick casts. Another class falling victim to haste removals is Priests, who have had Mass Dispel heavily nerfed. Not only is the talent to reduce its cast duration removed, but it now has a baseline cooldown of 2 minutes, requiring the use of an entire PvP talent to get it down to 1 minute. This is a huge nerf to all Priest specializations, Given their already numerous strong PvP talents, it's going to be quite rare for them to be able to reduce its cooldown. Additionally, even with the talent, it's still a significantly longer cooldown than in the pre-patch, so crowd controls will be sitting a lot more often. Priests can also no longer fade to dispel to avoid backlash effects, meaning if you go for that phase shift dispel on unstable affliction, you better be prepared to take some damage. Moving on, Priests have also had their power infusion nerfed to a 15 second duration, down from 20, and the haste reduced to 20% from 25%. This is probably related to how it syncs with other classes in PvE, but it's still a bummer no matter which way you look at it in PvP. It's not all doom and gloom for Priests though, as they can now use Shadow Word Death on Howl of Terror and Psychic Scream, making Priest vs Priest battles a bit more skill based rather than Undead having a huge advantage. Discipline has also gained the new ability Ultimate Penitence, which does huge healing or damage and causes the Priest to become immune to crowd control. So when you see a Priest trying to get this cast off, you should aim to kick it before the initial cast completes, or they will easily heal through all your pressure. Next up, we have Warriors who have gained two incredibly strong PvP talents and a rework to one of their most commonly picked talents, Storm of Destruction. The first new talent is Safeguard, which will apply 20% damage mitigation on the Warrior's ally for 5 seconds after using Intervene. This talent will also give the Warrior two charges of Intervene, but at a cost of it being a 10 second longer cooldown. This talent could see play against setup comps like Rogue Mage, where the Warrior is actively trying to peel for their team. They will now be able to mitigate all types of damage, not only physical. The second new talent Warriors have gained is Battlefield Commander, which has a ton of effects, most noticeably putting a root on Piercing Howl, a 5% damage buff to the whole team when Thunderous Roar is up, and reducing Intimidating Shout's cooldown by 15 seconds. This talent is truly insane and can make a warrior's fear not line up with the new 90 second trinket cooldown on healers, giving them an easy kill window. It also provides more damage and quality of life passively by talenting into it. As for the Storm of Destruction change, Bladestorm will no longer apply Mortal Strike, but will instead apply a 70% snare, so make sure you try to use a movement ability to escape rather than walking away. Moving on, some classes got some small changes that can make a huge difference in the meta, such as Fistweaver's Ancient Teaching, which has been increased to 40 yards up from 30. This is a godsend for Fistweavers in Solo Shuffle, as they would previously struggle to heal casters if they did not play in melee range. Now, with this change, both parties will be able to play their own game, kiting and healing according to their individual class strengths. Hunters have also received a change to their Feign Death, increasing its damage reduction duration to 3 seconds up from 1.5. Although this may sound incredible on paper, they will no longer dispel when using Feign Death, making this change both a nerf and a buff. Another class that has received a mixed bag of changes is Devastation Evokers, who will now do less front-loaded damage as their mastery has been altered, along with a buff to their overall damage. This means that you should watch out when you see those Devastation Evokers trying to spam out Disintegrates, as you're going to be taking far more damage than before. And to wrap things up, we have the talk of the town, Restoration Druids, who have gained a new PvP talent, Call of the Elder Druid, which gives them Heart of the Wild every one minute when they shapeshift. This makes their Cyclone cast 30% faster when in Boomkin form, and their Bear form significantly more potent due to the increased HP and Frenzied Regen charges while Heart of the Wild is active, making them both significantly more disruptive and tanky once a minute. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skill Cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. 
So there we have it, the most important mechanics that you need to know in patch 10.2. We want to hear what you think though. What changes are you most excited about? Who's got the more overpowered rework between rogues or demon hunters? Let us know in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our weekly videos.